Hey everybody, this is Gabe from Ceramic Pro Pottstown. Today I'm putting together an informational video for you to show you how to take care of your Tesla after it's had ceramic coating and or paint protection film installed. This Model 3 here is in the shop to get both of those. It hasn't been ceramic coated or paint protection filmed yet, but we're going to still explain the process to you and show you how you can wash your car and inflict the least amount of damage while doing so. Some things to know first, Teslas come with very soft paint, so that means they get damaged and they mar very, very easily. Typically, this one has been, I think the owner's only had it for three or four weeks, and he hasn't washed it yet, and there are huge wipe marks from when the dealer got their hands on it. And that's something normal to expect uh, with any new vehicle when you go to pick it up, is there to be love marks and things like that on the, on the paint. So. The first thing to remember is, is during the winter, you're going to want to rinse the vehicle very thoroughly and get that salt off. Even go as far as to use a salt remover. You can get that on Amazon. It's usually $20 a gallon. It's dilutable. We use a traditional proven two bucket wash method. And these are kind of all the tools that we're going to need to do that. So we've got our soap bucket and our rinse bucket and in the bottom of each of those is a grit guard. This grit guard is what's going to help keep the dirt and grime that you pull off the car from going back on the car. Our wash mitts. I like to use two different colors so that we can differentiate which wash mitts are what for what job. Uh, we'll use one wash mitt for the top side of the vehicle, the top half, and then we'll use another wash mitt for the bottom. That way, we're not taking the bottom part of the vehicle that's most contaminated and closest to the ground, and we're not dragging that up onto the paint on top of the vehicle. So we have soap in one bucket and just water in the other. And what we'll do is we'll give a thorough rinse across the vehicle, and then we're going to use our foam cannon to shoot soap all over the vehicle. We're going to let that soap dwell and encapsulate any loose dirt and grime, then that's going to drop off the car, kind of, uh, the, the objective is to help remove any existing dirt and grime before you start your contact wash. And then after that, we're gonna proceed to our contact wash. Uh, and that's gonna consist of taking the wash mitt, picking up soap out of the bucket, putting it onto the paint. You're gonna see us use top to bottom, left to right motions with the wash mitt. That's so that we can keep track of where we're going on the vehicle and so that way we're not introducing circular uh, wash swirls into the paint. After we get done with the panel, with our wash mitt, we're gonna come back, we're gonna dip it into the rinse bucket, we're gonna agitate the mitt against the, against the grit guard that's at the bottom of the bucket, we're gonna pick it up, we're gonna put it into the soap bucket, pick up more soap, and move on to the next panel. The goal is to inflict as little damage as possible. Drying is a very important part of this process and it's often the one that causes the most damage and that's what a lot of people don't realize. We'd highly recommend the use of microfiber drying towels. Microfiber drying towels are a 70-30 blend and they are going to significantly reduce the amount of damage that you inflict during the drying process. After the wash is complete we will mist the vehicle with a detail spray. We use it as a drying aid. What we're doing is a few things. One, we're lubricating the drying towel. These drying towels can scratch paint if they're taken across the vehicle without any lubrication. The next thing that that detail spray is going to do is that it's going to help break any standing water that's on the vehicle off the surface. So when you miss the vehicle, you'll start to see water just kind of flow off the car. The third thing is, is you're going to spread around some additional protection. You're going to give some added gloss and shine from a freshly washed vehicle. So with all those things, you know, that's how you're going to help reduce the amount of damage that you're doing when you're washing your Tesla. Things to remember is that you're going to want to stay out of the car wash. That means the style of car wash with big spinning brushes. The only thing those spinning brush car washes do is grind dirt and nastiness from the car in front of you into your paint at high speed. The biggest thing to remember is that after you're done washing, while you're drying, you wanna make sure you get all the water off the car. What you don't wanna do is ever let a vehicle air dry. Air drying a vehicle is almost guaranteed to 
uh, introduce water spots and mineral spots, things like that onto the paint, including if it's coated and PPF, you wanna take care of that as well. Treat it just like you do clear coat and don't let it get abused. You can use an automated style car wash. That's the style of car wash where you pull into the bay, it's usually one bay, and then there is an automated system that moves back and forth over the vehicle, sprays the vehicle and rinses it, but doesn't touch it. After your vehicle's been ceramic coated or has paint protection foam installed, a touchless car wash becomes a very viable care option for you and it helps to keep the car clean. Without a ceramic coating or PPF, the touchless car wash usually doesn't do a great job and it looks like crap. Well, after you have it coated and you've had PPF installed, the touchless car wash actually does a pretty good job. Now that said, you can also use a self-serve car wash the style of car wash where you wash it yourself, they provide you the machine and all that. You can use the pressure washer wand, the soap and the rinse feature, nothing else, no cleaners, no uh, waxes, nothing like that. You shouldn't be using any of the other automated options that are available inside of the self-serve car wash. That includes the foaming brush. No foaming brush, it doesn't matter if you rinse it, you saw the person before you rinse it, people use those to clean dirty trucks. They're laid on the ground. You don't want to pick those up and then start grinding that into your paint. The end all be all is the two bucket hand wash, which is how I'm going to show you how to care for the car. The two bucket hand wash is always going to be your best method of washing to get as most off the car as you can. Following the two bucket method system ensures that you get an enjoyable wash experience you get to cut your wash time in half and you're inflicting as little damage as possible. A detailed spray wipe down is not a replacement for a full contact wash and it is only good for wiping away light dust after it's been sitting in your garage. It's not okay to detail spray your vehicle after, we've, after you've been driving it for a few days. You should be using a ceramic coating safe pH neutral shampoo for your vehicle no wash and wax no stuff from walmart avoid using any of the stuff over the counter get a good soap that's highly lubricated preferably one that's highly concentrated and one that's meant to care for ceramic vehicles the soap you choose is a guarantee that you're going to have a good wash experience make sure you're choosing one that doesn't have have any heavy degreasers or surfactants or anything of that nature Use a pH neutral, no glossifier style of soap. We only want the cleaning power and lubrication. We don't want any other properties. We don't want anything to stain. We don't want anything to hurt the coating or PPF. Avoid using those types of products. Ceramic coating safe, pH neutral. When choosing your water source to wash your vehicle, if you have really heavy water at home or like heavy city water that's been treated very heavily or there's a lot of mineral deposit in your water do not wash in direct sunlight do not let that water dry on the surface when it comes to washing the vehicle you're going to want to choose a pressure washer that's between 1200 and 2000 psi somewhere between 1.2 to 2 gpms we almost exclusively prefer electric if you've had paint protection foam installed on the vehicle you're going to want to keep the tip of the pressure washer at least 15 to 20 inches away from the car. You don't want to get it super close because you can shoot water directly underneath the film and then it has to be redone. And it's super easy to spot when there's been water intrusion in your film. We know exactly what it looks like it, and it's the only thing that looks that way. We use a Krenzel 1622 TS here in the shop. It's about 1600 PSI. I believe it's about 1.6, 1.7 GPMs, I'm not certain offhand. But that's, that pressure washer is typically enough to rinse down the vehicle and get it to do what we need it to do. You at home, if you don't have one, you can use a garden hose. And if you don't have a pressure washer, obviously you can't use a foam cannon. What you can use is a foam gun. It connects to your garden hose. You fill a container with soap and you're off to the races. When it comes to your foam cannon, you're gonna wanna fill it with about 25 to 30 ounces of water first preferably distilled or filtered water and hot if you can. Then you're gonna pour anywhere from two to four ounces of your concentrate inside of the foam cannon. You're gonna close it. You're gonna swirl it to combine. Don't shake, 
you introduce extra foam that way and you reduce its effectiveness. So we're going to move into the wash process now. We're going to start with our thorough rinse. We're going to go around and foam the vehicle with our foam cannon and we're going to let that dwell. We're going to foam the wash bucket to get our soap nice and foamy inside the wash bucket and then we're going to start our contact wash. Now the goal here is we're just we're spraying the vehicle top to bottom, trying to push any dirt and grime that's on the car down to the bottom and off of it. Okay, now that we've got the vehicle thoroughly rinsed, we're going to grab our foam cannon and we're going to foam this thing down. Let the foam encapsulate that dirt and help it to drift off the vehicle. Okay, so now that we've got the car foamed down, we're going to let this sit and drip, and then we're going to refoam the car, start our wash process. So now that we've let the foam drip off the vehicle, we're going to foam our wash bucket, and then we're going to foam the car one more time and jump right into our wash method. You'll hear lots of people say that the secondary foaming isn't necessary. That may be true. I think it's a very large missed opportunity to introduce additional lubrication. So that's why we take the extra step and foam it a second time. So now we're going to take our wash mitt, dip it into the soap bucket. We're going to start our contact wash. We're going to start with the hood. So we've got our soap on our wash mitt. You see there's a ton of suds here. So we try and keep our motions straight line, front to back. I usually end up doing this part of the windshield as well. Remember that the wash process doesn't need to be this super fast rush against time. So now I'm coming over to the other side. I've used this side of the mitt. So now what I'm gonna do is flip it over. And the goal here is not to use pressure, just to let it glide. Because if you've done your soap and your rinse properly, they should be just barely anything left on the paint. So now we've used both sides of our mitt. We're gonna come back over to the wash bucket setup. This is the really important part. We're gonna take this, we're gonna push it down to the bottom of the bucket. Both sides, we're gonna agitate against that grit guard. 
The idea here is to break up any grime and dirt that the washer mitt picked up from the vehicle. We're gonna come back over here, soap bucket, pull it out. Now we're gonna, I'm gonna do the front. Now I'm only gonna do up to here. I'm gonna save the bottom of the bumper, which is really dirty, for the secondary wash mitt that we use to help prevent dirt and grime from that's down there from traveling up onto the paint. So now I've got more soap on my mitt. So I'm gonna reach up here to the roof, side to side. We're gonna come down onto the window, side to side, left to right. We'll get the mirror. Now this is the important part. Do not go in circular motions. We go side to side, top to bottom, left to right. And we stop right here, right along this body line. We don't wanna go any lower because that's when we start picking up dirt and grime and dragging it up onto the rest of the paint. So what I'll do here is I'm gonna flip my mitt over and do the next section. Remember, take your time. It doesn't need to be a rush. You can enjoy this. We're gonna keep working our way around the vehicle here. So now I've got my different color wash mitt. Now I'm gonna go through and do the bottom sides of the car. Come over here. If it gets too dirty, we can flip it over. And I'm gonna show you here. This is a great example of why you don't wanna put this on the top side of the paint. See all this dirt? Pick up these fuzzies. That, if, for what I can see, there's a, a hundred times more in the mitt that will grind into the paint. I'm gonna get inside the air dam here. It's a place that a lot of dirt likes to hide. Inside the car. See how the mitt's dirty, dingy? That's why we use two separate wash mitts. So now we've uh, got our contact wash complete. We're gonna rinse all the soap off. See, we've got standing water on the paint here. We do not want to let this stay there. So we're gonna take our Americana Global detail spray. I'm gonna give this a spray. We're gonna take our drying towel and we're just gonna drag it across the paint. Remember, we want to use as little friction as possible. It's okay to get some streaking. That's gonna help evaporate. Now, when you get to the other parts of the car here, you know, just be gentle. You don't need to scrub. All you gotta do is just drag. We're just dragging. So now we can go around the whole vehicle and dry it. Now 
just to recap, this is the best way to wash your car by hand. If your car has been coated or PPF'd, you can use things like a leaf blower, a dedicated car dryer. After your vehicle's been coated, those things make drying the car super fast. And of course, the less you touch it, the better. Just remember that every time you go to touch your car, you're scratching. That's the bottom line. So reduce the amount that you're touching it in general. We used our two bucket method with our soap and rinse bucket. Remember when we took the mitt to the paint, we started top to bottom, left to right. We split the bottom of the car off, washed that separately with a separate wash mitt so that we didn't take dirt and contamination on the bottom of the vehicle and bring it back up onto the top. We dried the vehicle with a drying aid. We used a, a detail spray and a microfiber drying towel. Less is more, you don't need a ton to dry the vehicle. Use a, a dedicated microfiber drying towel, not a terry cloth, not a chamois, a dedicated microfiber drying towel. A bath towel is not enough. Anything except microfiber drying towels and forced air, such as a leaf blower or an air blower, is gonna damage the paint. It's recommended that you wash your Tesla after it's been coated in PPF and Ceramic Pro at least once a week. At bare minimum, you need to do it twice a month. You need to wash your vehicle, so that way you're doing everything that you can to take care of it. This is a really expensive investment that you've made in getting paint protection film and ceramic coating applied to your Tesla, so make sure that you take the extra steps to take care of it. You wanna always make sure to use a pH neutral soap, nothing with heavy degreasers or waxes in it. Those things can A, hurt the PPF and ceramic coatings, and then waxes and sealants can cause the coatings to behave very weirdly and not give you the hydrophobics that you're looking for. Always wash out of direct sunlight. Don't wash in the sun, you're gonna end up with water spots, and you never wanna wash your car when the car surface is hot. Give it a chance to cool down in the shade, never wash your car while it's hot because that's how the water evaporates and flashes, and then you end up with mineral deposits, water spot etching, and that's not a good time. If you guys are looking for more information surrounding how to care for your Tesla, if you're considering having your Tesla paint protection filmed or ceramic coated. We here at Ceramic Row Pottstown would love the opportunity to provide you with some education. We're always willing to answer questions, kind of look for a solution for each individual customer. We're more than happy to talk to you and help you out in any way that we can. I hope this was helpful. We appreciate you watching. Don't hesitate to send us an email or leave us a message if we can help you with anything. Thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate it.